Genesis chapter 15 verses number 1 to 6. Are you there po? Okay. Let us read this uh, in unison. Please begin. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, unto me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in thy house, and mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Shall we pray, Paul? Lord, thank you once again for giving us this opportunity and this privilege to study your word. This blesses every one of us, Lord, and give us continually that uh, diligence, Lord, and uh, joy in studying your word, to learn more from your word, Lord, and be able to apply all these things. Please help me as well as I uh, preach and teach you word to your people. Please empower me, Lord, and may you be the one to be seen in me, not myself. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Thank you, Po. Nakapawis, di pa kami nag-lunch eh. Brunch na kasi nangyari. So, here in this uh, text, this is a very familiar, you know, in the previous chapter, we know what happened. Because this uh, previous chapter here focused on Abram's action. And here in this chapter, it deals with Abram's emotion, including the horror of great darkness here in verse 12. Uh, shall we go there, please? Chapter 15, verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. So, you know, People with faith are also people of, with feelings. Amen? And feelings must not be discredited or be ignored. We are made in the image of God and this includes also our emotion as well. Our emotions. So, while it is unwise to trust your emotions and bypass your mind, or let your emotions get out of control, it is also unwise to deny and suppress your emotions and become a religious robot. Now in the book of Psalms, we can see David and other writers in this book, okay, how they're uh, honest to God of how they felt deep inside. How they felt about themselves and also how they felt about the circumstances in life. And this is a good example for us to follow. But you know, the battle was won. Uh, if you're going to read here in uh, chapter 14. Abram were able to defeat those uh, uh, powerful kings during his time by just gathering a uh, uh, few men that were trained under his uh, uh, household. And we can see that Abram was very afraid. You know, fear is normal. Right? We can have fear. But for one thing, we are human. And also our emotions can fall apart. Now after time, after this uh, great uh, danger and difficulty, we can also see some of those uh, characters in the Bible like Elijah. Right? He was so discouraged after the victory over Baal's uh, prophets and also uh, uh, prophets of the groups in Ma on Mount Carmel. We can see that in 1 Kings chapter 9. He was so discouraged. You know, after that mountaintop, we have to understand that there comes the valley. That's why another factor was the possibility that 
Also, why Abram was so afraid was that he was so scared that those four kings might attack him at any moment. You know, Abram knew that, you know, the eastern kings, they did not take the defeat uh, lightly or those enmity died down quickly. They will try to find time to make revenge at the same time. Now this afternoon, let us see here in verse 1 what we can learn about Abraham, the father of faith. It says here, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. So how does the word of the Lord come to us? Now, in the Bible, it happened in many different ways. Now, it can come uh, by a personal appearance of God, the same as what he did to the uh, Old Testament saints, as well as by an audible voice, the same as what he did to uh, Samuel, and also by visions or by dreams, like what, he, what Daniel experienced. And also by the ministry of angels or by working of the spirit upon the mind by the making or also by the making alive of the passage of the scriptures to our hearts. That's how God works or speaks to us. Amen. And also by the ministry of the prophet or by the ministry of the preacher as he preaches the word of God. That's why in, in this after I hope that uh, the Holy Spirit will continue to talk and speak to us in these passages. Now, we can see here in verse 1, the fear of Abram. You know, Abram just returned from a great military victory. You know, after, after that, uh, but we cannot see the account here in the Bible that Abram boasted himself because he knew that that victory was given to him by God. You know, during the course of the campaign, he made a bitter enemy in King Chedolomer. This king was mighty enough to come against Sodom and the cities of the plain. But surely Abram felt that he too was in danger of the attack from this king from the east. But again, we can see here that God has a word of comfort to Abraham. To comfort him in his fear. Yes, it would be very, uh, uh, I would become hypocrite if I will tell you I don't have a fear. Everybody has fears. We have to accept that. But again, God will give reasons to put away our fears. Now, point number one. Another thing here that we can see, the fear of Abraham. Abraham. Now, as what I've said, God has reasons to put away our fears. Why? Because number one, we have here the peace from God. Amen? The peace from God. That's why, here in verse 1, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy great, exceeding, great reward. Amen? Now, this is the first time here the, the phrase, Fear not, is used in the Bible. But thank God, it will not be the last. Men may encourage us in different ways, but we have to understand that the, the encouragement of men cannot uh, be compared to the encouragement that God will continue to give us. Amen. Now in the Bible it tells us God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power. That's what the Bible is telling us. However, when the Lord comes by and speaks peace to your heart, fear must take its what? Flight. Remember what happened to the disciples in John 16, uh, John chapter 6, 17 to 21. Let's go there, please. In John 6, 17 to 21. And entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty-four longs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. In verse 21, Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land 
whether they went. But again, in the other uh, uh, passages of the scripture, okay, during this event, okay, God, was, Jesus was looking at them. It means that God's presence has always been with us. Amen? That's why we don't need to be afraid. Because God sees what is happening in us. That's why this is a perfect picture of us when we try to do God's will, but do it our way without seeking and relying on God's help. Many people are doing that. Amen? Where we keep on doing our own way. Now in verse 20, let's go back there, please. We can see here, for Jesus, it was enough to, in, to announce His presence. Amen? Amen? It is I. It is me. Be not afraid. That's why He came to bring what? Supernatural help and comfort to His people. That's why we don't need to be afraid of. You know what? We have to put this in our mind. That we will face trials when we set out to do what Jesus tells us to do. We have to understand that Jesus knows this and He also understands it. We should never be deceived into thinking that if we are, take note, if we were really right with God, everything in life would be easy. No, it's not. Everything will not be easy because challenges will always take place. No? Although we believe that even though we will experience these trials in life, God's comfort and God's presence will always be with us. And that's what we believe. That's why He is our great I Am. Amen? Let Him on your vessel and He will calm your storm. Peace from God. Amen? You know, we've been to uh, many trials but we can see the hand of God keeps on working in us what a blessing amen another thing protection from God you know Abram needed not fear from the attack of the enemies fear not Abram I am thy shield and thy exceeding Great reward. Remember that the Lord has camped about him and all he and everything. Remember that he had providing perfect protection to Abram day and night. But of course, we are still in our flesh. It's normal that we can what feel those fears in life. Take note on this. Those who are the Lord's are sheltered by Him all the time. Let's take a look in Psalms 34 verse 7. In Psalms 34 verse 7, please. Verse 7. Yeah. Yes, thank you. The angel of the Lord encompasseth round about them that fear Him and delivereth them. Round about. It means on every side. God's protection will always be there. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3. Let's go there please. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, let, let's not, uh, let's not uh, uh, going to stay uh, low on this. Let's proceed right away to the next one. Another one. Not only peace from God, protection from God, but we also have prize or reward from God. You know, Abram is a man who was left home. He came, uh, he left the place uh, which was a, uh, I would say, um, a wealthy city during those days. Child is a boor. And Abram was uh, a man who was left home and family in order to follow God. But as yet, he has not received even the slightest hint of all that he has been promised. 
He is also a man who gave up much when he refused the offer of the king of Sodom. You know what happened, right? In uh, Genesis chapter 14, verse number 21 to 24. And it was very enticing. You know, when the king will offer something on you, when somebody will offer something on you, and example, if it is a huge sum of uh, money or price, that will be very enticing. But again, what happened here? Abram, what? Refused or rejected that offer. He has an integrity. Now the Lord comes to remind Abram that if one has the Lord, amen, they possess everything. Take note of that. We have the Lord. We have our God. We have our powerful God. Therefore, we possess everything. Take note that what, early, what earthly treasure can compare with God's love. What what earthly, uh, what, I mean, what earthly treasure can compare with God's grace, mercy towards us, every one of us? Salvation, that forgiveness of our sin, that presence of God, that uh, uh, the peace that comes from God, the power, that heaven, I mean, heaven, that God will continue to uh, give to each every one of us. You know, nothing can compare to these things. When we have Him, we possess it all. We possess it all. And even if we have none of this world's goods, remember that the child of God is not to be pitied. Amen? Hindi po tayo kawawa, mga kapatid. A Christian, the children of God, are always in the hands of our powerful God. We have Him. Amen? When we have Him, we have all that is His. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Romans chapter 8, verse 17, please. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, so, if so be, that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Take note that because we are in Christ, we have the privilege relating to the Father as Jesus does. Therefore, we are what? Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Because we are in Christ, we are also called to what? To share in His suffering. Take note that God's children are not immune from suffering. We're not immune by that. Amen? We're not immune by this. We know. That it will really come into the lives of each every one of us. Eh, huwag kang payak-iyak dyan kung may problema, dumarating sa'yo. Dapat pasamlamatan mo yan. Because God has a purpose on it. Another thing, if you can remember the prodigal son, amen? In Luke 15 verse 22, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. Take note, all of these things, all of these possessions, okay, was brought to the son. Okay. But none of these were, be, uh, can be considered as necessities. They are only meant to honor the son. And make him know that he was love. You know, that is our God. That's the prize that we can receive from our God. What a blessing, amen? amen. Sometimes we are not, we cannot really do the will of God in our lives. And sometimes we try to make our own way. But again, God is always directing us and helping us to stand once again. Now let's proceed to verses 2 to 5. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. 
Verse 3, And Abram said, Behold, to me thou given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my neighbor. You know, as if Abraham is saying, Lord, I have everything. Maybe Abraham would say, I am, I am one of the richest uh, men in, in this place. But Lord, I want a son. I want somebody who will uh, uh, take care of those possessions that you've given me, Lord. But you know what? These are not questions of doubts. But again, they are honest questions. Again, point number two here. We can see the future of Abram. God doesn't mind at all, but again, here. Abram knew where to take his burden. And as a result, he received the answers he sought. You know, if we have something in our hearts, don't keep it. What we need to do is what? To lay it to God. That's the most important thing that we have to do. We have to understand that there is a lesson in that for you and for me this afternoon. Let's proceed. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6 and 7, please. But be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Now when we say prayer here, it is the, uh, our, uh, all of our communication, to, communication with God. And supplication, it means our uh, directly ask God to do something. That is supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen? That's what we're doing every Saturday. Not only every Saturday, but that's what we're doing most of the time. All the time. Paul wrote that everything is the proper subject of prayer. Everything. Because there are not some areas of our lives that are no uh, that are no concern that are not being concerned by our God. Everything is being concerned by our God. That's why shared to him. The future Abraham. Now we can see here that God gave him a promise here in verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, This shall not be the name. Because you know what? This has been a promise of God. That he will be a father of many nations. But nations. But again, he doesn't have a son. Now prior to this, it takes 15 years before the, uh, the Lord answered his prayer. That's why it takes time when we pray to God. It may not come right away at the moment that we expect. But God knows to give that on the right place and at the right time. This shall not be the heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be the heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Now we can also see here the simplicity of God's promise. Very simple. God's promise is stated in the simplest and in the clearest of terms. Abraham here is assured again that he will have a son and that son will be his heir. Again, all of God's promises are made in the same manner. Take note that he speaks very clearly in his word. That's why we have to learn to take him at his word and believe all that he tells us without questions. Don't doubt God. Because when he says something, he will fulfill it. Luke chapter 8, 18 verse 17, please. Uh, 18 verse 17. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as little child, 
shall in no wise enter therein. You know, tama ba yung text ko? You know, he is looking for a child of faith. Now, you can see those children. Eh? When they will be asked, okay, I remember JL when Brother John asked him, JL, did you jump? And when we were uh, having our swimming. Because she has faith with his father, she jumped. You know, that's what God wants us to have. To have faith. To believe Him. No matter what circumstances may uh, enter in, in. Let's believe Him and trust Him that He can do something for us. That He will deliver us out of this miry clay. Pete, I mean. Because that's how God works in us. Not only that the supremacy of God's promise. You know, God's promise said uh, something about God's power. Abram is an old man. We know that. Well past the days when most people think of fathering children. But again, God's promise here is designed to overcome the laws of nature. And do what men say cannot be done. Take note of that. They were given a child at, the, at an old age. I just might say, uh, maybe when Abram was uh, uh, sharing this promise of God to, uh, to his household, maybe some of them were doubting. Some of them were laughing, uh, maybe some of his servants. But you know, the supremacy of God here, it would do the people of the Lord to learn that our God is not is what? Our God is an able God. Let's read Ephesians 3.20. God is able, amen? He is able. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, above all that we asked or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen? That's why you can think or imagine things beyond your experience. God can what? Do above that. Beyond your ability, God can do above that. Amen? Not only that, also for every good thing that you have experienced in life, God can do above that. God is able. Amen? That's why we need to remember that God, that He is a God who operates in the realm of all power. Luke 1.37 Everybody knows this. And this is very familiar. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. When we ask God to help us to deliver us with these problems, God is slowly um, doing His work step by step. Why? Nothing is impossible towards Him. We need to remember that we do not serve the God of a uh, the can do, but we serve a God of the what has done. Take note of that. Before we ever exercise our little faith, His plan is already in motion. Take note of that. His plan is already in motion. And He's working out His will through His supremacy, through His power towards us. That's our God. And again, not only that, the simplicity of God's promise, the supremacy of God's promise, but also the extent of God's promise. Now everyone, Abram here was concerned about the single heir to his fortune here. But God was concerned with giving him more heirs 
than he could count. God wanted Abraham to know that he was about to receive a blessing that it would blow his mind. Take note on that. We serve the God of what? Abundance. This what? Afternoon, take note of that. We serve a God of abundance. Are you not thankful for that? John chapter 10 verse 10 please. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but to steal, uh, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. It. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. He wants, us, he wants to do more in our lives than we can imagine. Can you see that in yourselves right now? We're just nothing. But because of His grace, because of God's grace, because God is able, He's working in our lives more than can we imagine. God is not just enough. He is more than enough. Amen? He is not interested in doing the ordinary and drawn to the meal this afternoon. But again, He wants to leave us scratching our heads in amazement at His power when He comes through. Lord, thank you so much. I can't imagine how you gave this to me. He wants to blow our minds this afternoon. He's not all we need, but He's all we have. And is more than enough for any situation. Let's make it fast. Let's proceed to last point. Point number three. The faith of Abram. Now in verse 6, the Bible tells us, And he believed in the Lord and counted it for him for righteousness. Capital, all capital, if you have noticed that, Capital letters, Lord, capital L, capital O R D. It means Jehovah, the existing one. You know, when Abraham put his trust in God, especially in God's promise to him, a descendant here who would also produce the Messiah. God credited this belief to Abram's account as righteousness. As righteousness. So this is one of the simplest yet greatest verse in the Bible. It tells us all about Abram's faith here. What it teaches us about his faith should be true about our own faith as well. Now we can see here the cords of his faith. The cords of his faith. Now, the little word here, in, I N, tells the tale. Abram has moved beyond what? Hearing the word of the Lord and believing the promises of God into the realm of casting himself totally in faith upon the Lord himself. I hope that we have this kind of faith. It doesn't just believe the word anymore, but what? He is what? He believes it. He believed it. He is like Job. Let's proceed to Job chapter 13 verse 15. Job 13.15 oh, This is a very good verse. Good challenge. Though he slay me, Yet I will trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. You know, this is uh, the attitude that we can see here uh, in the life of Job. Okay. Through his past and through his present crisis. He didn't understand any of this situation. He felt that God left him. He felt that God is not with him. But again, we can see him. 
that at the same time he could still exclaim and yet it said yet I will I trust in him nobody knows the purpose of God in our lives we don't know what really will happen after this pandemic will it continue for a short period of time or just for a longer time nobody knows we cannot understand God's plan but what we can do is to what to trust in him this is what we need It's the course of his faith in the Lord. So the question is that has your faith made that transition this afternoon? Or it is one thing to believe what the Bible says about God and his promises. You know that it is another thing to move from the intellectual acceptance of the facts to the absolute trust in his person. But again, what we can do is to trust in Him. Another thing here. The depth of His faith. Now Abraham believed in spite of the obstacles. Amen. Do you still believe God in spite of these uh, obstacles that we are facing right now? I hope so. But again, no doubt others around him thought he was fool when he said or shared those promises that God had given to him. But again, he still believed God. He still believed God. This is a great challenge for each one of us today, this afternoon. Our faith in him should be unassailable. When you say unassailable, it means unable to be what to be attacked or unable to be questioned or unable to be defeated and unwavering you know men may mock us or other people may mock us because we believe in heaven because we believe the bible they may think us fools when we speak that we are saved and we will go to heaven and we might be mocked because we, we will say that uh, we, know about, we know about God. But again, if you are saved, then let no trial, no naysayer. When they say naysayer, those people who keep on criticizing or keep on opposing something. And no devil could cause you to waver your faith in God. That's what we need. This is what we need. And lastly, the prophet, the prophet of his faith. You know, faith in God always pays off big. And Abram's was no exception here. That's why when Abram believed God, God erased Abraham's sins and applied his own perfect righteous to Abraham's account. That's why here in verse, verse 6 here, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for what? Righteousness. Wow. Praise the Lord. But again, there are two types of righteousness that we can accomplish. We can accomplish righteousness okay, by our own efforts and we can also accomplish righteousness accounted to us by the work of God when we believe. But again, salvation has always been a work of faith. Now, This lesson from Abraham's life is applied to our own lives as well. In Romans chapter 4, verse number 13 to 25. We're not going to read that one anymore. If you're taking down notes, you can just write it there. But Abraham, but take note that Abraham was not saved by keeping the law. No. He was not saved by keeping the law. For it had not yet been given during this time. And he was not uh, saved by being circumcised. 
No. For it had not, uh, it had not yet been commanded. He was saved by simple what? By having faith and believing in God. So what was the message that Abraham believed? A message about that a message about a promised son. And that is the same message that saves the sinner today. Let's proceed to John 3.16. Very familiar verse. And Pullu memorized this. Right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's the message. So I don't know which part of the message God has spoken to. But I hope that, that as we continue, don't waver your faith towards our God. Amen. Our faith must be fear. This is a blessing that we have from our great and powerful God. So just continue to serve Him. Before we call our pastor, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for this message that you've shared. I pray, Lord, that this message will continue to work. It's every one of us, Lord God, and enable us to grow spiritually. Lord, please continue to bless this church, our pastor, it's every one of us. Please uh, fill our hearts always, Lord God, with joy and gladness as we serve you. Thank you, Lord. This is all I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we can see that uh, the faith of Abraham is a quality faith, amen? It is a faith that uh, does not uh, waver even though it is faced with uh, what we may call insurmountable odds. It is uh, something that does not uh, fear. It is something that is firm in its belief. Because only quality faith can withstand the uh, test of time. Like for example, in our time today, so many people have already uh, lose some degree of their faith. They are becoming hopeless because uh, of the situation. They try to things into their own hands they try to survive using their own uh, ways imagination their uh, plans and they are you know wavering because uh, it is as if no matter how far they look there is no hope in sight but the faith of Abraham is different because God has proven to him who he is by giving him the victory over great enemies by blessing him and that even though he complained god ascertained his uh, his uh, promise to abraham by giving him the very desire of his heart and not only by giving him a son but by making him the father of many nations so when that promise was given to Abraham, it was given in a time wherein it seems it's too late. But a faith with quality will not look at the circumstances. It will look at the person who gave the promise. And if God can create the world and everything that is in the word then God can make him a son and can multiply his seed so the same thing with us if the God who created the universe is our God then he can get us through all of this pandemic anemic academic no matter how you even if the devil will mimic we can get through all of this 
Because God will not allow anything to happen to His children without His permission. When God allowed this pandemic, we are in His mind. And He already has a plan or a purpose in what we are going to do in the midst of this pandemic. And that is not to lose faith. And that is not to, uh, to get rattled, not to panic, and not to go on a, what we call a survival mood. Because God always desired for His children to thrive, not just to survive. Because surviving is, are only for those who are desperate. But thriving are for those who are firm. 